Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and the newest update through Visual Studio Code just dropped. The yes, oddly named September update released this October. They're always one month out of date with their naming. Uh, well, it just released and we're going to show you two of the newest features hands-on and then uh, we'll go into the release notes and highlight a couple of the other features here. Now, uh, I'm going to now show you the second new feature. You might be thinking, hey, wait a minute, what was the first one? Well, the first one is it starts up a heck of a lot faster. Now, it's hard to measure exactly how much faster, but what they've done is a lot of um, paying of tech debt behind this release. So uh, the plumbing behind the scenes has changed. They've implemented ECMA script modules, and that should lead to faster startup times for you. We'll get back to that detail in just a second. Now I'm going to show you the second really cool thing in the hands-on demonstration time, and that is in your Explorer window over here. You can now do a Control-Alt-F and do a find. So for example, I could come down here and within the file project, I can search for all of the things that say, for example, draw, and it will find all of those results. Now, the cool thing here is there is also fuzzy search. Now, fuzzy search is wonderful for people like me that can't spell for bleep. And uh, we'll show you the same thing in action. So instead of draw, what I'm going to search for, turn fuzzy search on right here. So we got fuzzy match. And now I'm going to basically spell it the way I would, which would be wrong. And what it's doing is saying, okay, well, you tried DRW, probably not what you meant. So what it gave us results for is raw, but also draw. So if you are an absolutely craptastic speller, like myself, or you just like scramble things in quickly, you're going to probably want to turn fuzzy match on. So this is kind of one of those little, it's a small change on the surface of it, but it is going to be an absolute game changer for people with larger projects. So I definitely like this uh, find in Explorer new feature that has been added. So what else can you expect? Well, first off, if you want to grab this release, go in here, go to help, check for update, and it will find it for you. And then let's go into the release notes now. So I'm going to turn this off. We will focus on the release notes. So what? can we expect in the September 2024 release? Well, I'm not going to go through too many of these for one really big reason. And this is one of those things that pisses me off about Visual Studio Code on and on and on and on is they, uh, they keep putting more and more Copilot stuff in here. So this is like a Copilot advertisement. Copilot. Copilot. Uh, and then another one of these in here is Copilot as well. A lot of this stuff, you know, right here, Copilot. There is so much Copilot stuff being shoved down your throat. And Copilot is a paid add on on top of Visual Studio Code. I really wish they would separate that out and have their own separate release notes. So I'm going to ignore all the Copilot stuff. If you are a Copilot user, be aware, yeah, there is a bunch of stuff in here for you. Now, the big one I showed you already the Find in Explorer. I love this feature. It is a wonderful new feature. Uh, bravo. I don't think anyone is going to disagree with that particular feature at all. Now, the next one here is ESM. So this is, um, again, they, they added support for EMC, ECMA script uh, modules as a way of you know, bringing all of the pieces together. All of their layers now shipping with ESM. So that means that all layers of Visual Studio Code, so Electron, that is the JavaScript runtime this all runs on. Node.js, the browser, the workers, they all use import and export syntax in JavaScript for module loading and exporting. Uh, so the, the legacy AMD loaders are disabled and will be removed uh, as part of the tech debt in October. So the move to ESM massively improves startup performance. Uh, for one, a lot of AMD overhead is removed, but the main workbench bundle size is also reduced by more than 10%. So basically, this means that Visual Studio Code starts up faster. Does it? That's up to you. I would say, in my opinion, yeah, that does definitely seem faster to me. Uh, so bravo. Uh, that is definitely more speed. It's one of those things people will always welcome. Now, how important startup time to you kind of depends on how you work uh, with Visual Studio Code in general. If you're the type of person that opens a project once and then leaves it open all day, you don't give a damn. But if you're the type of person like myself who quick opens files all the time and then closes them down, you will love any kind of startup improvement that you get. We also have... Um, more filtering options for source uh, source control graph and Python test coverage um, gets richer results in the editor. But the other thing that isn't listed in this top level summary, uh, there's a couple of other things that they've done from a tech debt perspective. First off is this, they have moved their package manager. Uh, so they are now using NPM as the default package manager and they moved away from Yarn to NPM. Um, so this decision was based on specific requirements of Visual Studio Code and centered around these criteria. Performance, initially moved to Yarn because of performance reasons and NPM 
can now meet our performance requirements. And security, we made our supply chain more secure by limiting exposure and reducing the number of tools we depend on. Now, this one is getting increasingly important because more and more people are using um, Visual Studio Code extensions as an attack vector for malware. It's one of those things you need to be very careful about who you trust when it comes to installing extensions for Visual Studio Code because there are definitely more and more malware is showing up. There's another thing in here that I really like, and I'm going to highlight it as well. And that is this right here. Now, it's a preview feature, so who knows like how long this is going to take to get here. But there is now support for multiple GitHub accounts as well. So it's possible to log into multiple GitHub accounts in Visual Studio Code at the same time. Functionality is enabled by default in Visual Studio Code Insiders. But if you want to enable it yourself, you need to turn on this flag right here. Uh, so a couple scenarios, they've got account one for setting sync and account two for GitHub pull requests, account one for GitHub extensions, account two for GitHub copilot. It's a nice feature. I think that it's going to be for a lot of people. If you don't actually need it, you'd be like, why would I need that? But if you do need it, you're sitting here probably salivating going, oh, finally, that makes my life so much easier. So nice feature. Uh, it's currently a preview feature though. So maybe that's why they haven't highlighted it to a greater degree, but that's it. Uh, at least that's what I'm going to focus on here. Again, I'm just ignoring the whole kill pilot stuff. There's too much copilot stuff in here. I know you guys agree with me on this one, at least most of you do, that you wish the copilot stuff was separate from Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code did not feel like a copilot advertisement, but it does. All right. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. September 2024 release for Visual Studio Code. Find and Files, the, the Find and Explorer. I love that. Great feature right there. Paying off some tech debt here, moving to ESM, faster startup. Love that. Uh, move to NPM. It's a behind the scenes thing. You don't really see it that much, but hey, I like that as well. Uh, and all of the Visual Studio, uh, the uh, Copilot advertisement, not a big fan of that. So let me know what you think of this release, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.